So thank you very much for um, um, for this um, um, extraordinary mm -hmm. conference, uh, which I was uh, very uh, ashamed not to be able to attend uh, from the from the start. So um, I'm happy to be here with you, and um, I will. I had actually I had in mind uh, a, um, um, a big um, text. So um, first I thought I would read it. But finally, uh, I changed a bit the scope of my uh, talk, uh, given the recent uh, political uh, circumstances in, uh, in France. And so I shortened uh, some parts, and I will, so you won't have the full uh, text. But well, if you are interested, I can send you uh, it afterwards. So, uh, uh, so I will I will make cuts, and uh, I will go faster on some issues and. Uh, um, well, uh, so that's um, that's it. Um, so I would I would like to start with uh, uh, Walter Benjamin. Uh, with this Walter Benjamin's uh, quotation uh, in his uh, thesis on the philosophy of history in uh, <clears throat> 1940, where he uh, writes, uh, "There is there isn't a single moment that doesn't carry its own revolutionary chance." So I want to put this. Uh, sentence as a kind of epitaph to my talk about the transformative virtue of surprise in order to stress uh, the scope, the final scope, uh, if, I, if I go uh, to this point <laughs> today, I hope so, uh, which will deal with uh, this limit case study of the political surprise, what I, what I call the surprise of surprises, uh, that is the revolutionary surprise. Um, so we face right now, after the results of the European elections, is the huge green of the far or extreme right parties. And now in France, with the dissolution of the National Assembly, a major political crisis of our institutions and also of our daily life. Um, and I would like to uh, uh, suggest, to offer, to propose a kind of uh, hermeneutical uh, model uh, key, which might uh, help shedding a light on this unheard critical situation. Uh, this model is simply summed up, can be simply summed up in the expression of a dynamic of surprises, which will be here applied to the political surprise, and which is uh, actually articulated in three main micro-micro phases. An anticipatory preparatory phase, first phase, a crisis rupture phase, uh, phase and an aftermath phase. Um, so the recent political sequence we just uh, faced and we're still facing this week is emblematic of such a dynamic of surprises, I would say, which fits quite well in the narration of what I call a cascade of surprises. Uh, thus, with the word cascades, this still accelerating the dynamic uh, along at least uh, three main surprises to begin with. Um, I don't know if... Oh, yeah. I had a slide, which is not exactly uh, <laughs> the one I had in mind for right now. But just to illustrate, I mean, surprise in a, in a broader sense as being uh, uh, ambivalent, uh, either negative or positive, as you know, and uh, um, 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 emotionally uh, also uh, associated with fear, sideration, or joy, jubilation. And so we have a kind of ambivalent uh, phenomenon here with surprise. Uh, so just to uh, well, a broader account. So, um, so this is the model of surprise I will deal with, I will have in mind, and I will uh, work with during the, this uh, talk uh, with these three main uh, phases. Um, and just well, a few references just to, uh, um, to start with. Um, so this uh, uh, recent political uh, sequence uh, illustrates uh, well for me this uh, cascade of surprises with first uh, the results, just to be concrete in the situation, now in the now situation, the results of the European elections. So a huge growing of the extreme of far right parties in France, 32%. So first surprise for the whole, whole population and the government as well, even though it was uh, partly anticipated, so we already have in mind this first phase of anticipation that is in structure uh, um, present in our minds, but the singular content is still surprising. The rupture 
is still here, even though we might anticipate partly in structure. Then we have a second surprise, which is the, uh, the decision of the French government of this uh, dissolution of the National Assembly. So second surprise, uh, this time for the whole population, but not, of course, for the French government, who was uh, 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 ordering this, uh, um, this surprise. So then we have here a dissymmetry between uh, the, ones, the one who surprised uh, the population and the population that was surprised. So we have a kind of uh, splitting of surprise between the surprising and the surprised. So the surprising being the government and the surprised being the population. And this uh, surprised uh, side uh, regarding the population uh, is uh, associated emotionally with uh, uh, something very negative, uh, which uh, has to do with uh, uh, sideration, with shock, with uh, that that was experiment, uh, experienced very strongly um, among people. Uh, so we have this splitting of the two uh, sides of surprise, surprising, surprised, in a very negative way. Um, and then we have the a third surprise, so in the this cascade, let's say, uh, uh, the announcement of an agreement of the main uh, left parties to unite, to present one candidate only in each district, so that's a third surprise, actually, very coming very soon, uh, one day after, uh, 20, 25 hours after uh, on Monday. And uh, that's a third surprise for uh, the whole population, of course, um, except the persons who were uh, coordinating this agreement. And also for the French government, this time, uh, who receives this third surprise as a kind of feedback effect of his own second surprise. <laughs> so there is a kind of uh, uh, counter move here, uh, and uh, we could say in French we say uh, tel est pris qui croyait prendre. So uh, the one who, was, uh, who thought who would be uh, impulsing surprise is actually the one who is uh, uh, getting the surprise back, you know? So that's very interesting as a kind of uh, phenomenon. Um, so I would like to keep this surprise scenario in mind while going into uh, 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 some steps now, in which I will present actually, um, so that's a cascade, I mean the chaotic, erratic, nonlinear cascade of political surprises, where you can't actually find a low, a very linear low of what's happening, because you're always struggling with what, what's happening and with uncertainty, with, uh, uh, I mean, what it's, uh, it has to do with. Uh, also what uh, Emmanuel was talking about, uh, uh, not expecting, not expectation, inconsistencies. Um, well, you can't actually know exactly what's going to happen, so uncertainty. Um, so I would like to, um, uh, to uh, keep in mind these two antinomic models of political surprise now, uh, which will be my first, uh, my, two, my first two steps, my two first steps, I don't know. Uh, I always hesitate. Uh, so a first model of surprise, which is uh, made of these uh, three phases, intensification, critical threshold, saturation, and uh, which illustrates on, uh, on, uh, on the level I'm going to deal with uh, the three phases. So preparatory phase is the intensification phase. Uh, the second phase, critical crisis rupture is the, the, the fact of uh, coming to a critical threshold. And then the aftermath phase, the third phase, uh, is um, content uh, laden with saturation. So I will uh, 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 explain a bit more, of course, this first model. And then I will present a second model of surprise, which is antinomic or orthogonal or completely um, alternative, let's say, uh, and which is characterized by, again, the, three phases, but the pre preparatory anticipate, anti anticipation phase is um, um, uh, contently uh, uh, characterized by open expectations. Um, then you still have the crisis moment, which we we'll, we'll see has a different um, understanding. And then we have a third phase with the, with I named here, which I name it creation, so, so a, a phase of opening. So as you see, it's very simple in a sense, but uh, the first model is, um, um, in a major way, a negative one. And the second model is, in a major way, a positive one. So, um, and, um, and then, if I have time, we'll see. 
uh, I would like to go into two final steps. Uh, so um, showing how from this second model, uh, so this uh, second uh, positive uh, model of surprise, uh, we, have, uh, we, we have a specific uh, content on the political level, social, social political level, with an intersubjective collective dynamic, uh, which uh, let emerge a first person plural instance, uh, which is the surprising subject. So the surprising subject is the one who is emerging from the whole dynamic, and uh, uh, he's not the one who is uh, leading the surprise and imposing a surprise on uh, another side of population, as we see uh, in the announcement, uh, Macron's announcement of the dissolution, where we had this splitting between surprising and surprised. Uh, but here in this uh, collective dynamic, uh, we have a, a, a whole surprise emerging from the whole population, uh, which is a creative one, of course, in that sense. And if I have time, I will come to this uh, limit case study, surprise of surprises, uh, just to illustrate and to um, go a bit further still on, uh, in the demonstration, let's say. Um, so to speak of a policy of surprise or politics of surprise uh, is actually ambiguous uh, because this expression can be interpreted in at least two ways. Uh, either as a politics or a policy of a government that takes its population by surprise, as we uh, lived recently, by adopting measures that were not announced in its electoral program. That's very common, as we know. <laughs> uh, or, uh, contrary to that, uh, in least frequent cases, by proposing measures that go beyond popular expectations. It's also sometimes happening now less than before, I, I would say. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this case is uh, very much illustrated, um, and it, then it's a positive surprise, of course, and it's very much illustrated, for example, we have an emblematic case in the post-war uh, situation when the General de Gaulle, uh, as, uh, uh, in, the, in the situation of reconstructing the country, devastated by war, uh, bring the, the Communist Party into government and sets, uh, sets a motion, uh, in motion a series of reforms, social security, paid vacations, retirement, that will introduce unprecedented social justice. So he goes beyond or beyond the, the wishes of the population. So that's a counter way of uh, dealing from the government uh, as the one we actually uh, most of the time know now. On the other hand, as we say, as we said, the government implements reforms à marche forcée, as we say in French, against the demands of the population, of the people, with the determination of, to create change against the people. And this is what is happening now, more and more, with the, in France and in other countries as well, with a, but most in France in a very emblematic way, uh, with the destruction of our public services, uh, the creeping logic of, uh, logic of privatization, um, and so on. Um, so in, in, uh, in the following, I would like to uh, focus on the opposite of this uh, top-down uh, transcendent politics of surprise, so, um, and, uh, which is uh, remote controlled in a sense, and I will be more interested in the uh, imminent, Im imminent dynamic of this uh, we, let's say, the first person plural, that makes the politic, political surprise, and how the social forces of uh, the human collective, political community, the deep, deepest sense of uh, civil, citizen, civic society, not only produce and construct, but also feed off such a dynamic. Um, so first, I will uh, actually first draw on a Gilles Deleuze approach and uh, sh try to show how political surprise uh, can be understood. So that's my, uh, actually my first model. Um, how political surprise um, uh, can be understood as a process characterized by intensification with the reaching of a critical uh, threshold and followed by a period of saturation. So the three phases of, the, of my model. Uh, and this presentation, uh, this first model, will lead me to explore its limits, its limitations, particularly in view of uh, the quantified or objectifying uh, negative vision of surprise that it illustrates. And then, well, I will come to an alternative model. So um, 
uh, which is more dynamic of openness and creation of new possibilities. Um, so this first model of surprise, intensification, critical, critical threat, threshold, and saturation. Uh, in Gilles, and Deleuze, Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari's analysis in lanti Oedip, uh, we have um, a description and analysis of a collective body uh, that is uh, understood as a system of relations between entities that affect each other. And, um, and there is always, in this uh, understanding uh, of, the, of Deleuze and Guattari, there is always a discrepancy between uh, the cognitive and affective uh, saturation speeds of the, these various entities and their social status, which means that a relationship can only be forcibly maintained if the hierarchically superior entities have the means to make it persevere in, in its existence, disregarding a certain general discontent. And yet, this um, maintenance of a, a discredited social relationship uh, at all costs produce stocks of affective and cognitive frustration, frustrations in these entities uh, that can't actualize any other relationship than the one they don't want. So it is from this proliferation of entities wishing to reshape social relations, but having de facto to renounce them, that social change, that is revolution, can emerge. I mean, in this model, it works that way. Sorry, the presentation is not... Uh, yes, but uh, I think I don't have... Uh, I didn't write everything, so... Um, well, you have... Well, it's here. Thank you very much. Um, so you have the main points. I, I didn't write the whole right here. Um, so we have, um, I mean, this process of political surprise that is uh, formalized in uh, Deleuzean terms um, in these, uh, well, in these uh, three phases. Um, so when, uh, when there is an imminent crossing of this uh, threshold, um, um, actually it doesn't allow, allow us to know either the timing or the content of what will be the surprise to come. Uh, so structurally, uh, such a dynamic make its upstream conditions visible. Um, in this case, for example, many uh, warning signs of multiplying dysfunctions uh, we all know in, the, in our social life, the health, healthcare system, hospital structures, educational system, but it doesn't allow us to know what the singular uh, content of this explosive material of the crisis will be. So the coming revolution, so as an echo to the other talk, which is running parallelly. <laughs> um, and indeed, in principle, the dynamic of surprise contains within itself its double postulation uh, or valence, positive or negative. And it is impossible, in a sense, to know what the social and political change to come will be, even though we can anticipate several scenarios an intensification that could ultimately converge and result in a kind of homeostatic return to the system of the system to the identical or the previous states, um, indicating that the state system of governance has not yet accumulated uh, enough frustrations and dysfunctions to explode, or alternatively, a saturation that reaches its limit points and fractures the current institution, bringing something else to the fore. Um, so the second scenari scenario might be the one we are facing right now with the coming of the far east, far right, far right parties to the, uh, the prime minister with uh, Bardella. Um, but even this second scenario, the new will again remain undeterminate. Um, so I will... Uh, go a bit quicker now. Um, so this model, this first model of surprise uh, is, uh, as, I, as you show on the slide, characterized by this uh, discrepancy or gap uh, between this uh, saturated affective mechanism on the one side and uh, uh, the, the, the fact that the saturation is imposed on by the elites and, uh, and uh, brings about the frustration of the, of the, of the person, of the people. Um, this, the model of surprise that I uh, propose for reading 
the process of rupture, rupture at work in our political uh, system is actually situated at the opposite of the Deleuzean semantics of intensification, critical threshold, and saturation. And, um, um, and uh, one of the um, difficulties of uh, this Deleuzean uh, model uh, is to uh, actually to um, uh, to, be to, uh, to, to, uh, to be situated uh, on a level where the, uh, the subject uh, as such uh, is not taken into account. So we have a model that is uh, actually functioning with a, an understanding of a subject that is uh, uh, well in illustrated in Deleuze's uh, words thanks to psychoanalysis and uh, psychiatry and where uh, schizophrenia becomes a kind of uh, um, modeling of a subject that is un understood as a, um, as a dissociated, inner dissociated uh, subject. Um, so that's uh, what uh, makes schizophrenia a central operator in describing this cut, this keys, uh, which is, uh, it can be understood at a revolutionary level, but that may also be understood as the way the subject is itself and, um, um, uh, dealing with dissociation within, uh, within herself. Um, so um, 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 the model of political surprise I, will, I would like to sketch out now uh, is um, uh, uh, orthogonal to uh, Dulles uh, dissociating, separating, and saturating, merging uh, skis, um, which brings about an implosive, an implosive uh, fullness of saturation. And uh, uh, alternatively, I consider surprise as being an experience of uh, openness with, which is generated by dy dynamic of expectations that uh, uh, cultivates also emptiness uh, as an exact condition of new possibilities. Um, so, so that these are, I'm sorry, I'm a bit late each time. Uh, these are some limitations of this first model inspired model of political surprise, uh, which actually um, uh, works with these uh, figures of crisis and objectifying processes of in intensification and saturation, um, which is uh, very uh, much mapping uh, some expectation of a third person prevalence of scientific discourse, but which operates without the subject's uh, knowledge in that sense and uh, which is based, as I said, on the conception of a subject as being at once dissociating and separating and also saturating and merging, uh, having in, in uh, herself uh, skis. Um, and so it actually maps uh, a, a kind of disconnected transcendent regime of the political surprise, which is imposed on from the top to the down uh, population. Um, and so it brings about, um, uh, in a sense, as a consequence, um, something that could be uh, named uh, pathological in the time, in the timing, in the temporality, uh, which um, um, uh, implements a kind of uh, understanding of uh, crisis as being permanent and as being uh, what I illustrate with the word chronicity here, uh, which is also, of, of course, linked to a, a negative concept of surprise as sideration and startle. Um, so, in my longer version, I had a whole point about what is chronicity, what is this chronic uh, time, uh, which transforms each subject into a stress agent, in a sense, um, and which is uh, perfectly uh, illustrated, uh, again, in the situation we, are, we just faced, uh, uh, where we are taken by surprise by this uh, uh, politic political announcement of uh, the dissolution, and which uh, um, has as a consequence this kind of uh, a stress, uh, emotional, emotionally uh, strong uh, stress um, um, uh, attitudes um, which each subject and the whole population is uh, living. Um, so, um, and in that sense, um, the, the crisis, when it, uh, uh, when it occurs as uh, something that should be uh, something very provisional and very um, uh, determinate in time, becomes invasive and in that sense become chronic. So we have uh, this uh, idea in the time of a permanent uh, crisis. 
So we lose, in that sense, the precious meaning of a moment that stands out, uh, that should be the, uh, the interesting uh, understanding of crisis <coughs> as something that uh, in the Greek etymology uh, is linked to uh, the moment where you are able to uh, discern, you are, you are able to uh, question, you are able to uh, uh, bring about new things when you are uh, critical, as we, ha as we do in philosophy. Uh, but here, crisis uh, uh, shifts completely its meaning because it because it becomes because it, it becomes a, a chronic. Uh, so it becomes uh, it erases every possibility to stand out. Um, so this um, uh, positive meaning of crisis is lost in that sense, and uh, it creates petrification in individuals, and it uh, freezes into a frozen state where uh, the inaugural meaning of a break that generates something is alienated, in a sense. Um, so chronicity has been uh, very much worked out in uh, <coughs> uh, psychiatry and in uh, uh, philosophy. So I just mentioned some uh, references here in uh, uh, Vievorka and Canas, uh, who are understanding chronicity at the systemic and institutional level, so not only at the individual level, and showing how uh, chronicity is, uh, uh, is, um, well, is driving exactly this kind of permanent crisis effect and uh, anxiety as a, also on the political level as a way, as a level to, uh, uh, to, um, to make decisions uh, quicker for the government. And uh, also this very pioneer text uh, de, from, by uh, Georges lantori Laura, La chronicité en psychiatrie, uh, which is probably the pioneer text on this, uh, on this issue. So it uh, completely transformed the understanding we have of crisis from positive to negative. And so this is this uh, positive understanding of crisis that I would like to re-implement in the, uh, the second uh, model that I would like to uh, develop, develop a bit now um, as an alternative model. Uh, which is again made of these three uh, phases, but three other phases. So, um, um, open expectations, crisis, so in the sense of the Greek, crisis, krine, krine, so uh, dis discernment, and creation. So, the main properties of this alternative model uh, are uh, an intersubjective collective dynamic, which is the uh, content of this uh, dynamic, and uh, it is generating surprise from its very collective inner dynamic. The result being a transforma transformative uh, virtue of uh, this first-person plural instance, uh, which become the surprising subject as such, and the one who is uh, um, um, emerging and letting emerge uh, new possibilities. So in that sense, um, <clears throat> this collective subject is not uh, surprised any longer. So we don't have any longer to do with these uh, uh, divided uh, sides of being surprised and being uh, surprising. Uh, it's not surprised any longer as being passive, undergoing events that you didn't decide, uh, being trapped, being feared. So all these negative uh, uh, values and emotions uh, that associate with this uh, surprised state that we know very well also in very, um, I mean, we may think as well of um, um, individual or uh, inter-individual situations when, uh, for example, of uh, raping, uh, when you are taken by surprise. So it's exactly on the individual level, this kind of uh, situation that we could transpose. Um, and so that's the second surprise uh, I mentioned with Macron's decision of dissolution as a transposition on the political level. Uh, but the, this collective sub subject becomes the surprising, in the French, le surprenant. Uh, and uh, actually uh, um, um, corresponds to the whole, the whole of the population in that sense. So the population then is uh, able to, be, to become the actor of this uh, surprise and not uh, being uh, uh, the one who is undergoing the situation uh, in the sense that the population then collectively impulses transformations from within, um, 
with the whole tissue of the uh, collective, creating uh, processes of uh, surprises. So emblem emblematically, that is the situation we faced recently with the third surprise as a counter surprise for Macron, the collective agreement of a new Front Populaire, uh, which is exactly the uh, situation of uh, um, a collective that is uh, leading to an ag agreement uh, and impulsing the whole uh, dynamic in the, uh, in the whole population. So um, it could be interesting to uh, describe further this collective uh, intersubjective process with different models uh, in, uh, uh, in philosophy, which are maybe not, uh, I won't have the time to uh, uh, develop uh, them right now, but um, it could be interesting to develop this uh, model with Adam Smith, I mean, uh, with uh, his way of uh, uh, being um, um, focusing on the common good and uh, um, uh, having uh, people as individuals uh, able to asso associate and to uh, be interested in their own individual uh, good, good, but at least being in line and being uh, fitting with the, uh, the possibility of, uh, uh, of uh, being focused on the, on the common good. Uh, so that's maybe not the most intuitive model we have in mind because we think of uh, Smith as being more a liberal or some, some uh, a philosopher um, um, uh, using utilitarian strategic mechanisms and uh, favoring uh, indiv individualism as a, as a goal. But still, I think uh, the uh, Smith analysis might be interesting uh, if we... Um, if we have in mind that there is uh, this uh, um, process of, um, of uh, uh, being ordered to something that is uh, uh, the, this, common, uh, this common good, um, um, despite the fact that each individual is going to uh, work for himself individually, uh, but still being aligned on, uh, on the idea of uh, um, contributing to the common good. Um, of course, another, uh, another uh, model or line of thought that is more fitting, intuitively more fitting in this uh, collective uh, intersubjective dynamics in, in the, the work uh, realized, uh, done by uh, Pierre Dado and Christian Laval, Commun, Essay sur la Révolution au XXIe siècle, where we have this uh, very, very much this uh, uh, possibility of uh, creating uh, consultations and mobilizations uh, from the very immanent tissue of uh, the uh, collective forces. Um, so the alignment here is uh, far more obvious uh, in the way each individual is going to be uh, contributing and part of this uh, collective, uh, uh, collective uh, uh, impulse and collective uh, endeavors. Uh, so that's uh, probably more obvious for, uh, for us. But I think it's interesting to have these two ways of doing because uh, liberalism on the on the first on the uh, one side and uh, uh, a more socialist uh, way of doing in the in the proper sense of the word, let's say, uh, might have the same um, goal of uh, bringing about these collective intersubjective dynamics. Um, um, yes, then. And yes, and now I will, um, yeah, I will come to my uh, fourth, uh, fourth uh, point, which is, uh, I'm in time, it's okay? Yeah, okay, great. Um, and uh, so I will uh, now go into this uh, limit case study of such a dynamic of uh, intersubjective collective uh, surprise. Uh, in order to push the potential of this model to its limits, to test it, and uh, to see if it uh, still operates, and uh, which are, um, if, if um, um, maybe there are also some limitations to this uh, model. So that's uh, a, way, a way we uh, usually work in, in sciences as well, where we try to find out a case study that is uh, a, a limit case study in order to, uh, in the, in the, in the Popper's, Karl Popper's understanding of uh, falsification, uh, to well to see if it works even even though you push it to its limits. Um, so I'm not I'm not a specialist of uh, a revolution. I'm not a historian, so I don't pretend to uh, become one right now. And I will only uh, like I would only like to use some uh, 
some aspects of the um, the reflection that was uh, 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 that was uh, um, uh, done for uh, um, already decades or even centuries about the, the re revolutionary uh, processes by historian and historians and sociologists. Uh, just to uh, well to transpose it to my uh, surprise uh, understanding. Um, how this model of surprise, through the surprises of surprises, which is the revolutionary surprise, uh, may shed a light on such a radical transformative process as a revolution. Um, so, um, so if, if I uh, start again with the general model, I, um, I, I, begin, I begin with uh, actually Deleuze, uh, Deleuze, uh, Deleuze's uh, model, first model. Uh, don't, so the discrepancy between a structural anticipation, uh, the first phase, uh, in our example, the grain for uh, right parties, and the unknown of the singular what to come, so the rupture crisis, phase two, and the following unknowns in cascade of the intermath, uh, so this uh, cascade of surprises generated by the present political crisis. So if we get, keep this model in mind, again, um, we have with revolution um, a case study that's uh, uh, um, very interesting, resonates a lot, but it's uh, in, in another word, in other words, it's different, has two specific properties. Uh, the first property is that uh, um, um, well, revolution is not, as I mentioned here, rebellion, protestation, demonstrations. And uh, the two main properties is that revolution is a global uh, phenomenon, whereas rebellion, demonstration, or protestation are local events, local uh, uh, moments. And the, uh, the second uh, different property is that a revolution most of the time uh, has a positive effect. So it brings about change, transformations in the end, uh, whereas rebellion, protestation, and demonstration remain most of the time negative or have no effect. So have to be repeated again and again or end up in repression. Uh, so, well, we have something far more ambiguous with these uh, local event, events than uh, as with, with the revolution. So, um, uh, so I would like uh, to uh, actually to focus on uh, for this uh, uh, revolutionary phenomenon on the uh, first phase, actually, on the anticipation preparatory phase. So the first phase of the model. Why? Um, because actually the second phase, so the phase of uh, explosion, crisis, rupture, uh, uh, is often the most visible, uh, the most documented, and uh, the third phase, which uh, concerns, has to do with the results of the transformation, uh, again, is uh, usually the most visible because we are looking for the results. So we are very much uh, interested in what's going to come in results. And um, um, so the, this cascade of different surprises. Um, so uh, in contrast, it seems to me that the first phase, so the pre preparatory phase, uh, is the, the less visible, the less described, uh, and it is de, uh, de facto ruled by uncertainty and invisibility. Um, and it seems to me that at the same time it is actually the most important uh, because it uh, triggers, it motivates, it determines the whole of the dynamic. Uh, so, um, so I would like to focus on this uh, first anticipatory uh, phase. And to, uh, just to illustrate uh, this, uh, the interest of this, uh, this first phase in the whole dynamic, I would like to distinguish between two types of anticipatory uh, phases um, in, uh, well, in broad terms. Uh, and the um, first type, which is an immanent social type, uh, which is um, mostly ruled by the spontaneous tensions of the whole political body. <coughs> and second, a more institutionalizing process of self-organization. So the first type, uh, what I uh, call here the social immanent uh, type, and which I <coughs> characterize by uh, what I call open conflictuality and a radical discontinuity of time. 
So uh, two main properties. Open conflictality is the re relational property. So what happens between the different uh, actors in the whole body, in the whole political body. And uh, the second property is uh, more uh, uh, referring to time, the uh, time level. Um, and for, in order to, uh, to understand uh, uh, what this social immanent type is made uh, of, I have in mind two main references here. So uh, uh, Jan Patochka's um, political uh, historical uh, writings, uh, heretical essays on the philosophy of history, and also what is uh, translated into French as Liberté et Sacrifice, écrit politique, and also Etienne Tassin's uh, work, uh, Un monde commun pour une cosmopolitique des conflits, so I have in mind these two main references as being our leading references to think about this uh, social immanent uh, type. And uh, <clears throat> if I rely on uh, some aspects of Patochka's uh, understanding of uh, uh, this uh, uh, dynamic, uh, this revolutionary uh, process, uh, we have a main uh, motive, which is in Patochka the motive of uh, discord, which can be also uh, uh, called uh, confrontation adversity, which is, to his mind, uh, the only re uh, real driving force for a collective dynamics for this revolutionary process. And um, in his view, so you know that the famous understanding Patochka develops with the uh, Heraclitian concept of polemos as being uh, the, well, the main force that is actually the conflictual, radical conflictual force that has to be uh, maintained over and over, that has to be uh, maintained open over and over, so no closure. Um, and um, and in, uh, in Patochka's views, if we uh, transpose it to uh, surprise and political surprise, uh, that's, my, that's what I'm doing here, um, actually the preparatory phase of political surprise, so all the uh, red signs that we uh, mostly don't see <laughs> or very implicitly see or deny uh, in the, this preparatory process of a, a political crisis, um, in Patochka they become actually the very face of crisis. So there is a transposition, there is a, 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 a shift from the preparatory phase to the critical phase, to the second phase, which is usually the most visible when everything explodes, you know. Uh, but in Patochka's views, if I transpose his, what he says, of course, to my issue of surprise. Uh, so I, I'm doing something more uh, very interpretative when I do that, of course. But um, for me, uh, what he says is that it, it's uh, open and over and over uh, uh, conflictuality of the social uh, political body, including every uh, actors in the society. Um, this open conflictual uh, phenomenon um, is actually uh, uh, creating, creating collusion between the preparatory phase and the crisis phase. So the crisis phase uh, is already happening in the preparatory phase, and the preparatory phase is uh, trans uh, shifting into the crisis phase. So there is a collusion between these two phases, which is very uh, curious in a sense, because we would like actually the dynamic of surprise and the dynamic of uh, this revolutionary process um, to, uh, to, uh, to follow these different phases very uh, 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 nicely, let's say. But it seems to me that with Patochka we have this, uh, this collapse or this collusion of the two phases, and then and it's uh, illustrative of this permanent polymorph constitutive of our, very, uh, uh, of our very being together, uh, which could be also shifted actually to the uh, third phases if we wanted to uh, uh, go this way as well. Uh, and then it is, also, of course, uh, um, based on the understanding of society as being, for Patochka, a fertile place of permanent contradictory tensions. So the goddess of discord, Eris, that is never destined to end. Um, so, of course, it's a radical view, and we would, we would say, well, uh, Hopefully it doesn't work <laughs> because we don't we would not like to go into this uh, radical view. Um, it's not very comfortable in a sense, and uh, of course it's in strong opposition with all the models we know of uh, self-regulation, of a uh, model of uh, dialogical dialectical re regulations we know. So I just named a few here with uh, of course uh, first uh, Kant, 
Kant's views of the, um, of the um, teleological piece, uh, Habermas more recently, even Etienne Tassin actually ends up in the uh, necessity to achieve peace in the end. So, um, so what's the productivity of this logic of war, we could say? <laughs> because it's a kind of uh, civil war that is empirically maybe uh, um, uh, foreseen by uh, Patoshka in his, uh, in, his own, uh, in his own words. So what's the productivity of this uh, uh, system? Um, that's an, uh, for me, that's an open question. Uh, but what we could say is that uh, the, the productivity lies actually in this uh, productive uh, dimension that is uh, always open. So there is uh, here, we could have in mind the fact that the, the opening I was uh, suggesting regarding surprise, which is uh, uh, the opposite of uh, a closed surprise of sideration. So the opening, the, the, the creative dimension of surprise here is exactly at work with Patochka, in a sense. If we go with, uh, with him to the end of his uh, understanding, uh, we have an opening that is, of course, in our view, in a let's say in a normative way, we would say that uh, this opening, this radical opening Patochka is favoring uh, is uh, negative because it, uh, it produces violence, it produces war, it produces contradictions, so it produces negative values that we would like not to happen <laughs> in a sense. So of course, uh, we, we could react that way in an, uh, with a normative understanding of what should be done. And uh, we, could, we should go to peace and not stay in war, at war. Uh, but if we look descriptively, and not normatively, but descriptively at what happens with this uh, radical opening, then actually we have the best example of what is uh, inherent in this uh, crisis moment of su surprise as a radical opening that is never closed, that will never has to, to be closed at any uh, point in a sense. So it might be a, a bit utopian, I admit, uh, but uh, I think it's interesting as a kind of uh, leading understanding or a kind of descriptive uh, understanding of uh, what we should uh, always keep in mind, even though reality catches, catch, uh, we are catch, caught up with reality and of course reality uh, um, brings us back to something more normative that uh, will bring about people together in a more peaceful, peaceful way, let's say. So uh, in order to, uh, well, to uh, mod modulate or to uh, modulate a bit this uh, radical model, which is for me uh, uh, to be understood as something heuristic, more heuristic than maybe the solution, uh, but it's still important to keep it in mind, and we tend not to, to we tend to, we tend to, uh, uh, to put it aside very because it's not comfortable. Um, so. Still, in order to, uh, to, sh uh, to uh, go in the direction of something that could modulate a bit uh, this uh, radical opening, um, well, we, have, we could have in mind a um, uh, more uh, second type uh, that I call the self-organized type. And with self-organization, I have in mind also, I did mention it here, but I, I have in mind also the way uh, Francisco Varela uh, um, talks about autopoietic models, so models that are very much uh, working on the self-organization, uh, self-organization, but also always opening new possibilities. So you have a kind of very nice balance between self-opening and uh, regulation. So, well, it might be more comfortable to think that way than in the Patochkin uh, terms. Um, and um, well, and here I, I won't go into philosophical references, uh, except maybe for a various model, which I think is very much operating. Um, and I will, I will just uh, 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 suggest two different uh, empirical historical examples. One, which is actually your example, <laughs> and maybe you will react to that, uh, because your, I mean, situated example in uh, Yugoslavia, uh, the former Yugoslavia. Uh, with uh, what was uh, imposed by um, the self the self management autogestion uh, model uh, with uh, in the Tito's uh, uh, period uh, which didn't last actually which might be seen as a utopia on the, on the empirical level uh, 
which not, maybe is not a, a, a possible lasting, lasting experience and solution, but still it had uh, its uh, coherence at the moment when, when it was uh, um, tried, let's say. Uh, and it has the virtue of, of being an empirical historical example and not only a model, a theoretical model. So I think it's interesting for us because it situates um, the possibility in, uh, in history and in effectivity. And uh, well, I also have in mind closer to us another empirical um, situation and model, uh, which is very um, much uh, led. That's well, the, the name I have in mind. Um, uh, of course, other people, but uh, I think of uh, Eleanor S. Ostrom's uh, way of, uh, uh, of um, um, in her book, uh, Governing the Commons in, uh, in the 90s, uh, with a, we chose uh, with a very empirical uh, demonstration uh, based on, on uh, numerous cases of self-organized and self-governed communities, very local communities, and she takes a, a and, and a huge number of examples with the uh, com communal containers. I just mentioned a few here of meadows and forests in Japan, or the uh, institution of irrigation systems in Andalusia. Um, so uh, the, the way uh, eco communities, micro eco communities, are self governing uh, themselves and self generating new possibilities at the same time. Uh, so, um, and uh, with these uh, processes leading to self transformations and a key or so level for institutional change. So, um, so that's another example, and it's uh, actually an example that is situated on the local, le local level, on the one side, micro local le level, and on the international level on the other side. So, well, it's interesting because we are at two levels which <coughs> are not the state level. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not um, I mean, the states are not uh, leaders of these, uh, um, of these transformations, but these transformations uh, operate either locally and also are understood at, in a systemic way at the international level because there are resonances of these, uh, of these numerous uh, local uh, experiences so that it creates a kind of network but which, uh, in a sense, skips the state level. Um, so, well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, and I will stop. Yeah, I will, I will stop right now, <laughs> actually. Uh, so um, I think that this politics of surprise uh, is mainly concerned here with processes. Um, um, and uh, in a sense, um, it's also a way to uh, maybe to blur a bit this very smooth logic of a dynamic of surprise, which will uh, go from one phase to another in a very neat way, very uh, a nice way, <laughs> uh, because actually it doesn't work uh, that way in uh, reality, let's say. So, uh, well, just to, uh, uh, to take some, uh, I mean, to... Um, I mean, to make some uh, reservations about my own model, uh, because I think, as uh, like every model, like each model, it remains a model, <laughs> and it, uh, of course, doesn't uh, fit uh, uh, completely. It has to be distorted in order to adjust to what's already happening in, uh, in reality. So I thank you for your attention. And, uh,